Hello everyone, today we're going to be dealing with more advanced PlayStation 1 ripping. I've done multiple tutorials in the past. I've done a PS1 101 ripping video, which helps out with approximately 75% of PS1 games that you will encounter. I've done an intermediate PS1 ripping video, which helps out with games such as In the Hunt and Die Hard, which have multiple bin files. But today we're going to be dealing with more advanced PS1 games, such as Japanese games in particular. And we're going to go to my working folder for today, 42818, PS1 folder. And I'm going to take this exceptional shmup game, Chowaniki, and extract it. And we're going to get all the files lined up and in check here. And we're going to work with them one by one and make this into a workable setup that we can run on the NES SNES Mini. So I'm extracting all the files right now. And I'm going to do a little bit of multitasking and go into my core set update for today. 42818 Extras Tools PS1. We have an additional 7 zip file which I'm going to have to extract here. We're going to have all the files in the same directory to work with here. And one of the very first files we're going to deal with is an ECM file. Typically, you get a bin and a Q file when you're working with PlayStation 1 games in general. But here we have an ECM file, and that's not good for our purposes. So I'm going to take the ECM tools and extract them. And I can do one of two things. I could copy the ECM tools to the game folder I'm working with or copy the game that I'm working with to the ECM tools folder. In this case, I'm simply going to copy the ECM tools to this folder here. Bear with me. And I have this ECM file here, which I need to be a bin file. I'm simply going to drag it on top of the on ECM. It'll convert it into an appropriately usable bin file. So it's opening up a command prompt and converting it into a bin file here. So we have one file out of the way there. Now we have an 8 file which is an audio file and we cannot use it in the 8 format but we could use it in another format. So what we're going to do is uh, back out to the tools folder again here and I'm going to install monkey audio It'll convert it to a file that I could use. And I would highly recommend following these steps if you'd like to be able to hear music with your Japanese games. If you just add the bin, you're not going to get your awesome music. Run Monkey's Audio. File Add. And I'm going to add the 8 file. Right there. 8 file and I'm going to decompress it and I'm paying attention to the bottom right here I need it to be 100% and it'll be an appropriately converted from ape to wave file that's not all though I have to do one more step after that with the audio file so we'll let that convert real quick it's at 50% not too much longer here and you'll run into games that have more than one 8 file as well, so things could get even a little more complicated, but it's not hard to work once you understand the general setup of the Japanese PlayStation 1 games. So we're almost done here, and we're going to convert this. First we converted the 8 file to a WAV file, and we're going to have to convert the WAV file into yet another file. So we're going to wait for this to show up here properly. And we have the converted WAV file right here, right next to the 8 file. I'm going to use this wave to bend here. And I'm going to do the same thing, just copy the wave to bend right to the working folder. And I'm going to just double click it or open it. It'll convert that wave file into a bin. It converted into a bend. Now, here's a very, very crucial step, and I highly recommend this for any time you're dealing with any kind of bin and queue files. I would simplify the name of the queue file. So we're going to just make it simply Choaniki. Keep things nice and simple. Then we're going to go inside the queue file and see what files are supposed to be accounted for. We have two tracks. Track one is the bin file. This is the one that I un would And I'm going to just make this a track one. To keep things nice and simple. 
track 01 bend. Track 2 would be the 8 file that I converted into a bend using the bend to wave and uh, monkey audio. I want to make that into track 2 bend. And you can see that track 2 is audio and track 1 is data. Then I'm going to save this. So I have the Q file, but I have my two tracks I need to work with. I have my on ECM file right here, which I'm going to make track one. And then I have my bin file, which used to be an eight file, then a WAV file, now a bin file. Yes, it gets a little bit confusing. I'm going to change this to track two bin. Now I'm going to go into hashi 2 ce and I'm going to go to File Add. And I would highly recommend anytime you're dealing with any CD based games going into settings. And where it says Compress Games of an Add in, I would have this disabled. If you accidentally leave it on, you can just right click on the game afterwards and click Decompress the Selected Game. But I'm going to leave the option off for right now. You can turn it back on when you're dealing with your NES, SNES, Sega Genesis, Nintendo 64, and so on. But I have it disabled for right now. And I'm going to File Add. And I'm going to go into the working folder. PS1, Joe Nicky. And I have to go to games and apps and change it to all so I can see every file. I'm going to add this simplified Joe Nicky Q file. And if I have the compressed games while adding option disabled, it will not have a 7 zip as an extension here. It did an appropriate addition here. But I'm going to have, since I'm one, running this with the PlayStation rearmed Neon Core, I'm going to have to do the bin forward slash PSX, which is what I use. You can do bin forward slash PCSX or bin forward slash PSX. And then I'm going to uh, do the appropriate name here that I would like to use. I'm going to do a little bit of a prefix here. PSX, semicolon, space, Chonicky. But I wanted to have the, the nice longer name here. So let's add the rest of this here. So I'm adding the title the way I'd like it to be. That works for me. And then I'm going to add uh, the artwork real quick. Inside the artwork, everything's in check there. But now what I need to do is uh, add two more files so I can run it. I cannot run it with just the Q file. The way I did it, I have the Q file set up to pull the bin files, but I have to add the bin files. So I'm going to right click, show Windows Explorer. Then I'm going to go to the folder I was just working with. And I'm going to take track 1 and track 2 bend and copy and paste them into this directory. And you do roughly the same thing with other chords such as DOSBox as well where you have basically a catalyst file, the initial file that has to be added in order to pull up the other files. In this case, I have the Q file. And of course we could convert, we could convert this to an eBoot if we'd like to as well. And I'm going to link to the intermediate ripping video so that you can do the bin file. But in this case, I'm just going to add it as a bin and queue. Get things right in motion here. We're copying it over and we want to have everything copied over here. And once that's done, I'm going to copy the entire folder. You can link it, export it. I mean, if you go into Hashi2 right here, you can do your... Export games, you can do your synchronized games, but what I do, my personal setup here, is I simply show Windows Explorer, then I click the CLV folder, then I click the Games SNES folder, and then I'll have the CLV folder that I'm working with right here in motion. Then I'm going to copy this entire folder. I do not run folders, I just have a main working directory, and I do dummy folder for everything else. But I'm going to copy this folder once it is done copying the file there. Almost done. 
and I just have to copy it over to the flash drive. And you'll see my exact setup in a moment here. Okay, that's about done. So I'm going to copy this now. Go to the flash drive. Removable disk. I have Hakshi Games. And then I pretty much manually copy the CLV folders I want right to this directory. And I have a dummy folder right here. And I did a dummy folder video as well. And I copy all the stuff I want to run with the dummy folder right in here. Nice and easy. I run a, usually 60 games, CLV folders at a time, the ones I would like to be able to save in the main user interface. But let's copy this over here. And once this is done copying, we're going to boot it up into USB host and verify that I did this entire process properly. And of course, I'll link to the beginner PlayStation 101 ripping as well as the intermediate 101 ripping. So that you have the opportunity to convert these into eBoots as well. But if you're watching the more advanced Japanese ripping video, I'm pretty sure you're accustomed to doing the eBoots by now using PopStation GUI. And that's a, those are also in the tool folder here. I'll go to those tools. While that's copying over. PS1. Typically, you, you'd use the Pocket ISO if you'd like to rip the audio and or video out of the games. And that's if you're running on NAND and do not want to have these 300, uh, 700, etc. sized games. And you can use PopStation GUI to convert them into eBoots. But again, I'll link to the beginner and the intermediate ripping video so that you know how to use all these tools. In addition to that, there are certain games such as Resident Evil 3 which have copy protection on them. I've uh, included a Qs and SBI file folder here, zip file. And the SBI files are basically patches that help you bypass the protection on the PlayStation 1 games. In the past, I would actually, many, many years ago when I was making backups of PlayStation 1 games, I would have to use SBI SBI files to patch the games when I burn them to disk. Otherwise, they would not properly boot up with my modified PlayStation 1 system. And we'll look in here real quick. And this does perfectly apply to the advanced PlayStation 1 rip in here. Here we have, uh, we'll look at Resident Evil 3 here. Notice there's an SBA, SBI file, and that's exactly what you would use to bypass the copy protection. Otherwise, the game is going to lock up, freeze, or crash, and not be playable whatsoever. So you have a ton of SBA files to work with any of the games that may or not have copy protection. But this is almost done copying to the flash drive, so we're going to boot this into USB host here once this is done. And we're going to test this game out real quick. Let's wait for this little thing to disappear from the screen here. And I'll be updating the core set shortly here. Almost done. Wait for it, wait for it, disappear from the screen here. <laughs> but I want to do this from scratch just so you saw the entire process. And we're going to make sure that it worked. The game needs to boot and I need to have music. In addition, I would also recommend typically closing Hashi 2 CE, which I'm doing right now, and reopening it, then copying. But since I didn't do that, I'm going to do one other little step here. I'm going to go to the folder that I am copying right now on the flash drive. Hashi Games. And I'm going to go by the one that I most recently added here. And that is going to be the Cho Nikki, obviously. I'm going to open up the desktop file. And if you close Hashi and reopen it, you do not necessarily have to do this. But since I didn't, I'm going to verify it with Notepad++. I'm going to make sure that the command line bin forward slash PSX is there. I'm good to go. So let's boot this into USB host real quick.
If everything worked out, I should have my nifty music with Cho and Nikki. And of course, boot into the game. And we have the splash screen. We're good to go on the USB host here. LED on the flash drive is syncing up now. So I should have my games here in a few seconds. Okay. PSX, Joe and Nikki, Ki, Kiyoki. Muteki, Jenga, Saikyu, Otoko. I messed it up really, really bad. So let's load this game and make sure it boots with the PSX Rearm Neon Core. And I'm really hoping I did this properly and didn't miss a little step here. We apparently have our music. We should be good to go here. And there are many, many Cho and Nikki games on many, many different systems from the PC Engine to the TurboGrafx CD to the PS2 to the Xbox and so on. And here we're playing uh, the PlayStation 1 version. There's even one on the PSP. But this game must be played with the soundtrack. No doubts about that. We have our music. We have liftoff, we have action, pure go here. This first introduction stage is no indication of what the game is really like. There's much more to it. You'll see in a moment here. It's actually quite a bit like Radius. Proteus, Twin B, etc. It has got a little bit of that Genesee Quad going on there. But we're booting into the first true stage, which is more Gradius style. Very, very good game, well designed. And wait till you see the first boss at the end of the stage. It's absolutely ridiculous. Okay, we're at the first boss. Let's see what's up here. <laughs> this music definitely adds to the experience. And Sexy Parodius is another game that's quite a bit like this as far as its sense of humor. See if I can at least beat the first boss here. <laughs> Definitely not your everyday run of the mill schmup here. This is quite a bit different. And I think we're about to be on the second stage here. Let's see what kind of action we have next.
But I've been through the whole gamut of all of the, of the Cho and Nikki games. I mean, I'm a <laughs> tremendous shmup fan in general, so I have to play pretty much any shmup that I can come across. I mean, listen to the <laughs> soundtrack. It's a very, very cool soundtrack here. Let's see if we can continue real quick. I'm going to shut up here so you can hear this music for a minute before I shut the video down. It's <laughs> a very challenging game. So there you have it. Advanced PS1 ripping Japanese games. And we're playing Chill and Nikki here. So have fun playing a bunch of Japanese games, including 70s robot anime, which I also showcased in one of my Shmup Stravaganza videos. But hope this helps you guys and gals out as far as running Japanese PlayStation 1 games.